Hey, can you all hear me okay? Oh, you definitely can. All right, everybody, buckle whatever you normally buckle, because we're going on an adventure. Um, my name is Alex, and uh, I'm on the incident response team at Atlassian, and somebody let me do a talk here, and so here I am. Um, we're going to spend a while, we're going to spend half an hour talking about Mario's green brother, so, so thank you for signing up for that. Recently, uh, some people wrote about me, and they referred to me as a hacker who goes by the name Alex. And so that's, that's, my, that's my hacker name now. It's also my real name. Uh, and there's nothing I can do about it. So just, I mean, please join me in pretending that I'm okay with it. So um, before we start this, this is a story about me uh, hacking my friend. Absolutely don't do that. Don't hack your friends or anyone. They're your friends. Don't do it. Uh, unless you specifically ask them first and they understand what you're asking them, then it's okay. Uh, having said that, this is my friend Diana. Um, Diana's not her real name. That's not her real picture. I'm actually several Arduinos in a trench coat. Um, and she gave me permission to uh, do all this stuff. I asked her, is it okay if I hack all of your stuff? And she was like, absolutely, yes, go for it. And so a few things about her, she's a comedian, that's her job, and she's, um, she's, she's a sweet young millennial, she's kind of my age, and she's not particularly tech literate. She's as tech literate as everyone who's her age. And so she's gonna be the subject of most of this talk, so let's do it. Here's a, here's a couple of rules that uh, I told her about. I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have 12 months to do it, I'm not gonna say when in that 12 months, somewhere in that 12 months, I'm not allowed to delete anything. I'm not allowed to like modify anything that she has. I'm not allowed to delete her stuff. I can't interrupt what she's doing in her normal life. She can't, she can't like bother her. So for example, I couldn't reset her email password because then she couldn't get into her email and that would be bad. Uh, also, there's a couple of rules added by me. Um, I have to do the entire thing without her noticing that I've done it. Like I, I don't want her to know that I'm doing anything until, uh, until I want her to know. And also, I'm like friends with her, and I like have her on Facebook, and I like know her phone number and all that, and so I don't want to exploit that information. I want to do it as if it's for real. Um, also, you might be wondering, like, hey, there's this picture of Luigi up the front. It talks about Mario's green brother. Why is this talk called Operation Luigi? Anyway, in the interest of time, let's just get straight to it. <laughs> so um, <laughs> the first thing I want, the first thing you do, apparently, you do this OSINT, you do this OSINT thing. Apparently, the first thing you do is get someone's email address. So I used the, um, I was recently, the Shadow Brokers released this uh, tool recently, which lets you do this and uh, type a bunch of stuff into Google. And so I just typed her name into, uh, typed her name into, typed her name and the word LinkedIn, smashed that Google search button so hard it violated the terms of service, and it worked. We did it. And so, okay, I got her email address. Gonna need that later. I'm in. Um, <laughs> I think this is, this is my first time doing all this stuff, so I'm pretty sure this is how it works, though. Um, but the, in doing that, I noticed that she had a Hotmail email address, and I was like, that's, that's strange, because it's 2017, and who's, who's doing that? Who's using Hotmail to store the email? That's quite rare. And so I went to her Twitter and tried to reset her Twitter password, because when you try and reset someone's password, it will show you a bit of the email. And so it showed me a couple of characters and the at Hotmail.com. And I was like, no, this really is her email address. The rest of this talk will be about Microsoft Hotmail. <laughs> so let's do it. I also needed to know her phone number. Again, advanced hacking software. I uh, just typed her email address, which I already had, and the word phone. And uh, normal people don't have good OPSEC, so uh, she said she was uh, head, the head of some sort of club, and she was like, hey, you want to sign up? I'm the contact. Here's my name and email and phone number, which is what you have to do as the head of a club thing, but it also happens to not be very good OPSEC. So also got the phone number. Done. This hacking stuff is easy. <laughs> so um, now what do I do? I don't, like, I don't have a plan. Goodness, no. So um, I've got this adventure, I've got this phone number and stuff, I've got a whole bunch of other stuff, I'm pasting it into a Google Doc. I think the industry standard thing is to send someone an email which has a, which has a Word Doc and a macro, blah, blah, blah. But that's kind of like, that's, I can't, that's kind of boring, kind of happens all the time. And like, did she even use Microsoft Word? Like, she's a sweet young millennial, did she actually use it? I don't have Microsoft Word, maybe she doesn't, so I don't really, really want to do it, it's not gonna work. So I'm like, well, let's start with her email. Let's start with, maybe I can get into her email and then figure something out. Again, no plan, off the rails. Um, so now the next step is to get her email password because I can't just, I can't like recover the email account because then she would lose access to it. So I have to make it so she has access and I have access. And so there's this great uh, website called Have I Been Phoned where you type in an email address and it tells you if it's in a um, past leaked list of passwords from companies that got hacked. But nowhere does it say you have to type in your email address. So <laughs> cunningly, I typed in her email address and um, she was in a couple of things, but the only one that had passwords was in, the only one the only breach she was in that had passwords exposed at the time uh, was Tumblr. And so I was like, okay. Uh, I just happened to have that Tumblr breach lying around. And so um, here's what it looks like. Uh, it, the format of it is it's just an email address and then a colon and then the password hash. But uh, the password hash format is kind of a mystery. It's kind of sort of only partly documented. And so I read some documents about it. I was like, okay, no, it's actually, the, the consensus seems to be it's a SHA-1 hash and it's a static salt. And well, what actually, he just said static salt. You can't do that. You have to explain what that is. Um, so here's an example. Uh, imagine that it's the early 80s and you're storing passwords in plain text. It looks like this. 
and that's, that, hey, you've done it, you've stored the password, the user can type their password and you'll know whether it's the right one, it, it works. But no, I've heard that you're supposed to hash passwords and so, okay, let's do that. Let's turn the password into a big long hex number. And then, okay, now we're storing password hashes, we're doing it, but I went to a HackerCon recently and they said you should salt your passwords. So, okay, let's do that. And so now you hash the, you uh, add the, add a hash to the password, uh, so you add a salt to the password, before, after, in the middle, doesn't matter. And uh, then you get another hash. And the point of this is so people can't have a pre-computed list of a bunch of hashes. And uh, so here's me doing it, here's me following the advice. Okay, got to add a salt to all of these passwords. I've done it, here they all are. But you might notice that these two, uh, these two users have the same password. And so they have the same password and the salt is the same for everybody. So even after adding the salt, they still have the, the thing that's getting hashed is still the same for these two users. And so in fact, it's if and only if. So if someone has the same password, they definitely have the same hash and the other way around. Uh, that's what happens if you use a static salt. And so when you hash everything, these two users have the same password, which is one of the, which is like the salt has done its job in the sense that the pre-computed attack won't work, but I know these two people have the same password if I have the hashes. So why am I telling you about this? Because um, the first thing I did when is look up Diana's email address in the Tumblr password dump. And I looked it up and her password hash was there and I was like, great. And I spent a lot of time fruitlessly trying to crack it because I didn't know the salt. So I couldn't crack the hash the normal way. So I was like, okay, I guess I have to do something else. And so yeah, the salt, no, I, I've, supposedly the salt is out there on the internet somewhere, but I don't know what it is. If you know what it is, please tell me because I still don't know. Um, and so instead of um, trying to crack the hash, I had searched for Diana's password hash in the Tumblr dump. So not her email, just the raw password hash. And um, can, can you guess what it was like? Can you guess what happened when I searched for her password hash in the, in the list of all the Tumblr passwords? You'd think it would be just her, but actually, but actually, there was a whole bunch of good folks on Tumblr.com who, um, as about 20, who had the same password. Uh, well, had the same password hash, and because of the static salt thing, we know that they must have the same password. And so we're like, okay, the first thing I've learned, it's probably not a particularly good password because a whole bunch of people have thought of it. But uh, maybe is there more that I can learn from this? So um, I took just the email addresses of those people. So um, what Diana's email is in there, but this is, this is a list of email addresses of people who have the same password. They all have the same password as each other on Tumblr. Also, relatedly, uh, in 2012, um, LinkedIn was hacked and a whole, bunch of their, a whole bunch of their emails and passwords got exposed. And thanks to the uh, kind efforts and GPU cycles of the password cracking community, almost all of those passwords, uh, all the, almost all of those hashes have been cracked and those passwords are available in plain text on the public internet. And so I got both of those, I put them next to each other, and I looked up the email addresses of the people in Tumblr who had the same password as Diana. I looked up those email addresses in the LinkedIn dump and saw all the plain text passwords. It's simple. And I found that um, not, they didn't all have the same password in LinkedIn, but most of them, it was like 60, 70%, had all the same password in, in LinkedIn. And I was like, well, that's gotta be, they must have had the same password as on LinkedIn and as on Tumblr and as each other. And they must have used the same email for all those things. So this has gotta be Diana's password. Um, it's probably this QWERTY1 thing. It wasn't actually QWERTY1, but in this example it is. And so I'm like, okay, let's go. Come on, let's go to the Hotmail login screen, type it in, doesn't work. Went to, I went to all that effort and typing in QWERTY1, nope, wrong password. And I was like, well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I do all of that? And so then I was like, okay, let's try it on Facebook. Um, and on Facebook it said the password, it used to be her password five months ago, but it wasn't anymore. And so if you don't know Facebook, it's a website where you can keep up to date with the memes your friends are being tagged in. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, um, not Facebook, that, that password's not gonna work. So I guess we have to do this the old fashioned way, which is to send, do, do some sort of phishing, some sort of social engineering. Okay, let's do it. Uh, maybe this is what I should do, I don't know, I'm not an expert, but maybe this is how social engineering works. <laughs> like, It's my first day. <laughs> um, oh, okay, you're gonna take a picture of that? Cool, that's all right. <laughs> um, so here's the, here's the extremely unnecessarily complicated plan I came up with. So Diana's gonna be doing whatever she does on the internet normally, and then she's gonna get a fake email from Microsoft, and that's gonna make her go to a Hotmail login page, even though she's already logged into her email, but it will be a fake Hotmail login page that gives the password to me, and then after that, she'll go to the real Hotmail login page. This is like the classic way to do a credential phishing thing. And so I'm like, okay, first step is I need to make an email account to send this email. Can't send it from Alex, that's not gonna work. Has to look like it's from Microsoft. I couldn't register, I couldn't register any email addresses with Microsoft in the title or account or team or something, probably to prevent exactly what I'm trying to do. So um, let me introduce you to my new friends, these two round friends. It looks like they're two O's, but actually one of them is an O and one of them is the Greek letter Omicron, which looks a lot like an O, uh, but it's, you know, to a computer it doesn't, it's a different code point. 
And so if you spell the word Microsoft a strange way, for example, with these, with these omicrons instead of the O's, it looks like a Microsoft to you and me and in the Hotmail web UI font, but uh, not to a computer. And so I, I imagine you're wondering, is this going to work? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I also didn't know whether it was going to work. Like, I, didn't, I couldn't know in advance whether it was going to work, so I just went for it. And it does work, success. This is my Microsoft account team email address. All those O's are not O's, they're the secret O's that only you and me know about. And I sent this, I don't know, I copied this email from like a real Microsoft security alert thing which says like, oh, you know, there's Russians in your account or something. You better, you better click here, you better log in. You better do it or it's gonna be real bad. Um, I tried to not spend, I tried to not go to great lengths on this if I didn't have to, even though I did the O's thing. And so I sent her this email which says, you have 48 hours to log in in this extremely legit login screen, <laughs> and otherwise bad things will happen. And so uh, I have to do that, I have to make a fake login screen. And how do you make a fake login screen? Well, you go to the real Hotmail login screen, and you use this amazing hacking technology called <laughs> right-click on the page, and then you hit this button. That's a good <laughs> button. <laughs> I'm not an expert, but I'm pretty sure this is what they do in Mr. Robot. And so then, once I had a copy of the page, once I had a copy of the Hotmail page, it was just HTML. It was just like text, and so I needed to put this on the internet somehow. And you can go to you, there's a lot of complicated ways to do this, just hosting your own servers and getting certificates and stuff. But there's this static hosting website, which happens to be a great phishing website. I don't know if they know. And so like they'll let you host your thing on there, and you can have your own subdomain. You can have whatever subdomain you want. It's got an HTTPS certificate. It's a legitimate website. It has a good reputation. And no one, all the good subdomains aren't taken. So I was able to get a good one. So now you know. This is not. This is not sponsored by them, but you can use the referral code Diana to be immediately reported to the NSA. <laughs> and this is the um, this is the this is the domain I chose. So the real login, the real Hotmail thing is login.live.com or something. And so I made one that looks similar in the beginning part. I don't know if I could do more than one subdomain. Whatever. Close. Is she even going to look at it? Probably not. But, but um, real login, real login screens don't look like this. They look like this. They have a bunch of random stuff after the URL. So I put a bunch of other random stuff there, which I copy pasted from the Google login screen. Whatever, it's fine. <laughs> and so here's here's my copy of the login screen. It looks exactly the same. This is actually the same screenshot because it looks exactly the same. And it has her email pre-filled in there, so it looks like you know she's ready to log in because her email is pre-filled. I also had added this little extra thing <laughs> to the login screen, which uh, when when the login button is clicked, it'll add an image to the page, and the browser will try and request that image. But the URL of the image is just uh, a website I control forward slash Diana and then a question mark, and then plus whatever the password is. And so the reason I've done this is because then somewhere in my logs, on this, and so this is like the cheap and nasty way to collect passwords, but then somewhere in my logs, I'll have a request for forward slash Diana plus whatever the password is. And so I can just grab my logs for Diana, and it'll just be there. And also I um, made it so when she clicks the button, it waits one second and then goes to the, rem to the real Hotmail login screen. The one second is to simulate Australian internet times. Anyway, so I sent the email to her, and I was all excited, and I waited for 24 hours, and she didn't click on it. And so I was like, oh, okay. Maybe, wait, I did give her 48 hours, so maybe she's just running late. But then 48 hours, she also didn't click on it. And I was like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's two times, and it's, it's, it's not working. I'm not a hacker. I'm just emailing my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I was like, okay, all right, let's do this the hard way. I didn't want to put in lots of effort, but now I'm doing it. Now I want to do like a really specific phishing email that's just for her. And so I wanted, the usual way you do this is with a Google Doc, and I'm like, does my, is it, I can't use Google Docs because it's a Hotmail account. Is there a Microsoft version of Google Docs? There absolutely is, and it's called One Cloud Sky something, 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 and you can absolutely use it. <laughs> and I was like, great. And so I made a fake resume in whatever this thing is called, Docs. And uh, here's, here's the plan this time. Diana's gonna be doing her own thing. She's gonna get an email from a recruiter, and then the same thing's gonna happen. The recruiter's gonna link her to this fake login page, and then on the other side of the fake login page will be this Google Doc that I've made, no, this Microsoft Google Doc that I've made that is um, a resume. And then she'll, go, then she'll just read it and be like, okay, whatever, and go back to normal and not suspect a thing, because that's very important. It'd be bad if she suspected a thing. Um, so now I have to make a fake recruiter to send this from. And so um, here's the Google account creation screen. Did you know you can type anything you want in these boxes? Like, you, you, I, that's what I learned. And so, um, <laughs> I looked up a local company and stuff and found a believable sounding name and all that. And here's the email I sent. So let me go through this. So the email is from Kathleen Wheeler, which is just a name that I made up. And it's just from a regular gmail.com account because I didn't think normal people look at what email address things are from. I didn't like spoof the domain or anything because I think um, Diana just doesn't care. She's just not going to look at the domain. And even if she does, it'll be like, oh, it's from Gmail. Maybe it's her personal account, whatever. 
And so it says, hello, um, Dan is real name. Uh, trust you are well. I tried really hard to sound like a stressed office worker in this email because you know I didn't want to sound like myself. And so I hope this is how office I hope this is how office recruiters talk. Um, and so I was like, hey, what's up? Um, hey, what's up, Diana? Somebody has uh, applied for a job with us, and they listed you as a reference. And can you please um, confirm that you know this is the right person and that they work with you and all that? And so then it says, click here for the resume. Hmm. And uh, then after that, it's got, a whole, it's got a form where it says, can you confirm some dates? Can you rate some stuff from one to five? That's just to be distracting. So that the last, uh, that's just something distracting to read after you read click here. Because if the last thing you read is click here, you might go, hmm. And then it says, also, can I call you about it? Can you let me know a time for the call? Is the phone number? Her phone number. OK. And then I made a little email signature. Isn't that cute? I like, went, went to great lengths to make that little email signature. Anyway, uh, she, it worked. I sent it to her, and she clicked on the resume, and she logged into the login screen, and she tapped in her password. <laughs> But particularly astute uh, audience members will have noticed that uh, the password that she uh, typed into my login form thing is QWERTY1, which is the same password as I had from the Tumblr dump earlier. So actually, actually I already had this password for her, and this whole, <laughs> this whole thing, this whole thing has not uh, actually helped me log into anything of hers. So I've got, this is, I got QWERTY1 again, and I was like, okay, cool. And so I almost gave up here, um, because here's what I've learned about her. She does not know what her Hotmail password is. <laughs> because like, she just typed the wrong one into my login screen. But also, my login form thing will accept whatever password you type into it. So, and she doesn't know it's fake. So now she thinks that her password <laughs> is the one that she just typed in to the form. And it's all my fault. So I, I changed the login form. I changed the login screen to the fake login screen to just always say wrong password the first three times you type something into it. And um, I also made it so if you type in the previous password, if you type in QWERTY1, that counter doesn't go up. So you have to type in three things that are not QWERTY1 in the hope that when the password doesn't work, she'll just unload all her passwords, whatever they are. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what you do when you, like, if you just have, if you just have like, two or three passwords that you use for everything, when one doesn't work, you just unload the other ones. That's, that's what you do. It, it's, it's real. Um, and then, then she replies to the email being like, no, I don't know who this person is. Yeah, I guess you can call me. Here you go. Um, call, call me. I, I didn't call her. Um, and then I replied to her in a different font, cleverly, to look like it's a template or something. I don't know. Um, saying, oh, this is the wrong resume. So sorry, two exclamation marks. Stressed out office worker. Um, anyway, here's another person. Here's another resume. This is actually the right one. Even though it makes no sense that there are two separate people who both worked with you at the same place. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It just says, Oh, here's the same form again with a different link. Click it, please. <laughs> um, and this time, uh, she clicks it and she has a different password because she couldn't have typed in the previous one because that wouldn't let her. And she typed the same thing three times, but whatever. And um, I was like, okay, here's a different password. I immediately go to Hotmail, use the Elite browser, use the Elite exploit kit, the Google Chrome browser to type the password in, and and it works. And we get into her email inbox. Yes, finally, that was easy. <laughs> See, it was easy, it was simple. <laughs> Anyone can do it. Um, so got it, got the email password. And so I immediately try the password in everything else that I've found of hers, all, all, all the Facebook, all the other accounts, and it doesn't work for any of them, because somehow I've chosen someone with slightly above average personal security who does not have one password to everything, or even two passwords to everything. And so, okay. And then she replies to the email being like, no, I don't know who this is. What, what's this all about? Why are you emailing me <laughs> all these resumes? And I just replied back, trying to sound like a real recruiter, saying like, basically, oh, please just go away and don't email me anymore. It's all right. <laughs> please just don't freak out. And she didn't reply, so it's good. Anyway, back in her email, um, in, in Outlook Mail, when you, uh, when you search for something, it shows you the last five searches. So when I clicked on it, I saw the last five things she searched for. None of them were interesting. But I really wanted to search for some things, like say the word password, because I wanted to know if there were more passwords in there. But if I search for the password, it'll appear in the search history thing. So I um, went to this screen, wrote down the five things <laughs> that she searched, <laughs> and then <laughs> searched, for my, searched for my things. Didn't find anything, by the way. Found the same passwords over and over again, but not ones I didn't have. And then searched for the ones that I wrote down in reverse order, because it only shows you the last five. Like, I think Microsoft knows what I've been up to, but I think for the user, you only see the last five. So it was fine. It was transparent. And she probably wouldn't have noticed anyway. Like, do, do regular people, do non-paranoid people really like look at their last search history? I don't know, maybe. 
Anyway, so this, I, I've done it. I'm in her email. I, I did it. I'm, I'm, I've done it. I've hacked my friend. Is, is this the end of the talk? Obviously, it's not. Never believe these slides. Um, this talk is called Operation Luigi. Um, Luigi is Mario's green brother, and he's, um, you know, the, he's the wonky one of the pair. And so why is this talk called Operation Luigi? Well, to explain, um, let, let's just go through it. Here's, here's how Operation Luigi works. Step one, get into her Twitter account. But also, I'm not allowed to lock her out of the Twitter account because that's one of the rules. She can't, she can't be disrupted and she can't notice. So I also can't let her know that I'm doing this. So I have to be in her Twitter and she has to be in there and she can't know that I'm in there. Easy. So here's this eight dimensional chess strategy I came up with. I went into her email, went into Twitter, reset her email password, um, and I'm in, her e I'm in her email. So when I click the password reset thing, it emails her email inbox, which is, which is I've got access to. So then I set her Twitter password to this QWERTY one thing. This is the like, so this is the password that I think she thinks her Twitter password is. <laughs> even, though, even though I know it's not. So this is the eight dimensional chess strategy thing. Um, and so I changed her Twitter password to that. And then I deleted all the emails because when you, when you reset the password, it sends you emails and she can check that email inbox. Um, in theory, I should have like waited till she was asleep to like do all this so she didn't like see the email notification. But I didn't because I'm young and invincible. <laughs> anyway, the next step is to wait for her to log into her Twitter account because I want to make sure she, like, so she's going to be locked out of her Twitter account. All her sessions are going to be cleared, and she's going to like, be locked out of Twitter, and she's going to have that enter your password prompt. And even though her Twitter password is not QWERTY1, I really need her to type QWERTY1 into that box. And so I wait stressfully for her to log into Twitter. And then eventually, she retweets a picture of a cute doggo, and I was like, yes, success. And she, didn't, but she also didn't yell at me for, the, hey, you hacked my stuff, so I guess it worked. Um, also, I'm going to need to get into her LinkedIn. And so on LinkedIn, I try and do the, I do the exact same process, but when I try and set her password to QWERTY1, LinkedIn says, please choose a more secure password, presumably because I got that password out of the LinkedIn dump earlier. So <laughs> I was like, fair enough. I, was almost, I, was all, I thought I was doomed there, but I just changed it to her same password as her email. And then there's a little checkbox, I don't know if you can see, which says, require all devices to sign in with a new password. That's like LinkedIn speak for, um, would you like to clear all of your sessions? And by default, it's unchecked. And I was like, I'm absolutely good for that LinkedIn. Don't even worry about it. Don't worry about cleaning the sessions. Just change the password. Great. So now she won't even notice. She won't even be logged out. And so why did I do all of that? Uh, to explain, I'm going to need the help of former US President Barack Obama. Um, this is because uh, I did some stuff to Diana's profile pictures, but I don't want to show you her real pictures, so I've used Obama's pictures. So I went onto her Twitter and downloaded her profile picture and then photoshopped it like this. I don't know if you can see, it's quite subtle. There's like a 10% transparency picture of Luigi on there. And then I re-uploaded that as her profile picture. And there's no notifications or anything when you do that. So she had this little, little Luigi backdoor situation. And then I did the same thing on her LinkedIn. She had a LinkedIn picture as well. And I put another <laughs> Luigi on there. Um, and uh, I left it like this for like weeks. And um, she didn't notice, but afterwards one of her friends said that, um, one of her friends noticed. And they were like, oh, I just thought, I just thought Diana was just doing that just you know, for fun. And I was like, oh, OK, lucky, lucky I didn't get caught. Um, so yeah, that, so, uh, she gets silently Luigi'd for a couple of weeks. And um, I'm like, great, that's it. I've done Operation Luigi. But she still hasn't found me out. And like, I'm practically a Luigi technician at this point. And so like, it would be a shame to just, to just stop here. So that's why the rest of this talk will be about Operation Waluigi. This is going <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> to be a sinister turn for mature audiences. So uh, let's I don't really have any justification for this. So I'm just going to tell you about it, if that's OK. Um, so I went to her LinkedIn and changed her profile picture to be a very obviously Waluigi one. Changed her LinkedIn bio to be the entire Wikipedia page for Waluigi. Uh, <laughs> changed, um, changed all of her schools and stuff to be Waluigi schools and to be like Mario kind of stuff. And when I do all this, LinkedIn says her profile strength is advanced. So that's... <laughs> so you're welcome. I also, I also respectfully made a copy of, like, wrote, made a copy of all the, her old LinkedIn stuff so she could change it back uh, if she wanted to. <laughs> Um, and so also then I went to her Twitter and changed her profile picture to be this much more obviously Waluigi profile picture and changed the name and changed all the location and all that because uh, I, I wanted it to be really obvious and loud like, hello, you've been expertly waluigi my friend. And so then I tweeted out this picture and um, then when I, tweeted, when I tweeted out this picture, she replied to the tweet being like, OMG, like that's not me, that's her tweeting that <laughs> because <laughs> we're both in the Twitter account and she was like, OMG. And then she replied saying, I've been hacked, my dudes. And then... I replied to that tweet, because I'm also her, saying, <laughs> <laughs> saying, <laughs> and then I tweeted out this, also, <laughs> um, 
You can translate that one from Indonesian. It's the same. <laughs> and I tweeted out this picture, longing for the days of this sweet lad. When, wasn't that a simple time? And uh, yeah, that was Operation Waluigi. And so then what happened? Um, Dada loves her new Waluigi life so much <laughs> that like, she went and changed her Facebook stuff to also be Waluigi, like to be the same <laughs> stuff. Like I didn't have to do anything for that. She just did it for me because she's into it. Uh, these are some choice quotes from her. She says that she's, uh, she's since listened to a lot of Waluigi songs and really gotten into the culture. Waluigi is the ultimate symbol of postmodernism. He exists only as a foil. There are some takes on Waluigi that I did not know about until I did this. Um, we also meet up afterwards and we turn on two-factor auth for all of her stuff because, gee, this would have been a lot harder if she had two-factor auth turned on for any of this stuff because then I would have had to like fish her two-factor auth codes or like uh, social engineer her phone company or like man in the middle her or something or do one of the other much harder things. But most people don't have two-factor auth turned on. And so we talked about it and, she was, and we talked about password managers and stuff and two-factor auth and she was like very happy with the password manager. And I was like, you know what, maybe you don't. Maybe two-factor auth is good enough. You, you decide, you have the power. Um, and so also earlier in the talk, I talked about um, these LinkedIn and Tumblr um, passwords and uh, the password hashes and I was like, oh, I just happen to have them lying around. You might be wondering, but where did you actually get those? Thank you very much.